Hi, Aroha Media welcomes you to view a flash tutorial on the basics of camera movement. In our previous tutorial, we saw the BG dissection procedure. We learned how to trace bitmap pictures and trace them into vector objects suitable for animation. We also learned how to make a vector BG ready for animation. In this tutorial, we'll go one step further. We'll learn about camera movements in Flash. We recommend you master the basics of BG dissection before you start with the camera movement. Try the BG dissection tutorial on at least 5 bitmap backgrounds to gain command over it. In the process, you'll not only master the tools, you'll also ready yourself for dynamic BG animation concepts like zoom in, zoom out, commonly known as camera tracking. We'll also handle the camera pan technique. Let's start by opening the BG dissection file we have already created. We don't want to disturb the original BG dissection file. So, we'll save the file with the name of our tutorial, Camera Tracking. Remember, never ever disturb an original file. Make a copy to work on. This is one of the most important habits you should learn as a flash animation professional. Now that we have made a copy of the file, we are safe. First, Let's delete the layers not necessary in the document, namely the sketch layer. We'll lock the mask layer so it doesn't interfere in our operations. We want to work on the vector layer in this tutorial. So, we'll unlock it by clicking on the lock icon on the layer. Done. Now, let's specify the time duration of our camera tracking tutorial. To do so, Select the 100th frame on the timeline for both the vector and mask layers. Press F5 to add a frame. At 25 frames per second, this will add up to around 4 seconds of length. Now, let's enter the graphic symbol desert by double clicking on the vector image on the stage. We see all graphic symbols distributed on different layers. We are going to animate each of these layers. So, we'll need to add keyframes at 100th frame on the timeline. Camera tracking is of two types, zoom in and zoom out. We'll learn the zoom in type first. A point to be noted here is that, although this is called as camera movement, in flash, there is no camera. We utilize techniques like motion twin, scaling, and others to give the viewer a feeling that there is a camera. Okay, let's get on with it. Let's zoom in on one object in this BG, say the sun. We want to create an effect that makes the viewers feel as if they are moving closer to the sun. We'll be using the scale and rotate function here. Let's freeze the end effect we want first. For this, Drag the seeker on the timeline to the 100th frame. To select all the keyframes on frame number 100, we simply press Ctrl plus A to select all the keyframes on the same frame. Note that instead of selecting single frames on the timeline, we selected the entire row with just one keyboard operation. Next, we need to scale the entire set of symbols. Press Ctrl plus Alt plus S to bring the scale and rotate option and scale up the frame by 105%. Click OK to check if this scaling up is alright. We'll keep on doing the same until we are satisfied with the result. One aspect to be remembered is that we have to be very careful with the scale. The more scale up we give, the faster and jerkier the animation will be. Do explore more scale ups to understand this concept. Next we need the symbols to gradually scale up to our chosen size. So, again click on the top bar of the timeline between the 1st and 100th frame. Note that the entire row on all layers is selected now. Go to the property tab and in the tween box, select the motion option. To preview, drag the seeker to the 1st frame and press the enter key. You'll see that the camera is now zooming in. 
Another technical term for this is camera tracking. Okay, now observe that this kind of normal zoom in effect appears flat. It almost looks like we have magnified into an image. The animated BG feel is missing. So, how to make it more interesting and dynamic? We can enhance the effect of the camera tracking by utilizing the other objects in our BG. Let's see how. Here's a camera principle you need to know here. The objects closer to the camera move more and move faster than those away from it. If we can use this principle in this case, we can achieve a dynamic camera effect. Simply put, the objects closest to the camera must change faster than the rest. For this, let's pick the two cactus plants and the bushes attached to them. Note that we are making these changes on the last frame, that is, the 100th frame of the animation. Select the extreme left cactus plant and scale it up by say 110%. Use the scale and rotate function accessed by pressing Ctrl plus Alt plus S. Repeat the scaling till it appears large enough. Now, select the cactus on the extreme right and repeat the same process again. Select the bushes too and scale them up in proportion to the cactus. Preview the animation. You'll see that the closer objects are scaling up faster than the rest. We can see them coming at us faster, giving the scene some depth. Now, select the ground symbol closest to the screen. Always make sure that you are on 100th frame to avoid confusion later. Now, again bring up the scale and rotate dialog box. Remember that we scaled up the front objects to 110%. The ground is slightly far from the camera. So, we need a lesser scaling up for this object, say 105%. Ground 2 and the cactus with it are farther. So, select the two together and scale them up a little less than the first. Ground 3 and the cactus on it are still farther away. So, select the two together and scale them up a little less than ground 3. Do the same for ground 4. The trick is to understand the logic behind the difference in scaling up the objects to create an effect. There are no fixed parameters for the scale-ups. You can explore different values of scale to get the hang of it. Now to the building symbol. Let's scale it up a little more than the other symbols and see what we get. Double click outside the work area to come back to the main scene. Click the lock icon at the top of the layer stack to lock all the layers and activate the mask. Press Enter key. Do you see the camera effect now? For comparison, let's play the previous flat camera zoom in and now our enhanced camera track in. Let's play both of them again. This time side by side. See the difference? We just learned by scaling up the objects nearer to the camera more rapidly, we can achieve a much more enhanced and interesting camera effect. The depth of the scene substantially increases and the viewer gets the feel of a real camera. Alright, now let's work some more on the vector. For this, unlock the vector layer and double click on the desert symbol on our stage. Come to the 100th frame on the timeline. We tried the scale effect first. Now, we'll see how to make the scene even more interesting by moving the objects as they scale. Remember the principle. The objects close to the camera move more and move faster. Let's see the two objects closest to us. The two cactus plants and the bushes. Move them out of the screen on either sides. Move the other cactus plants a little as well. Now, again scale up the cactus plants and the bushes. Place them in a way that we see no leaks in the BG. Press the Enter key for a quick preview. See the improved effect? OK. Let's go to the next level and use the Advanced Options in the Properties tab. 
by pressing Ctrl F3. Click on the top bar of the timeline. Observe the property tab. Look at the Ease option below the Twin option. Click on the down arrow near the value box and push the slider up till it touches the value 100. This is called Ease Out. The Ease Out option will speed up the movement at the beginning and will slow it down towards the end. You can handle the speed control if you click on the Edit button. Let's see how this graphic manipulation works. Normally, the graph runs across the screen in a straight line. This means the motion twin is uniform all through the animation. Right now, we have chosen the Ease Out animation. So, the graph curves steeply up in the beginning and then smoothens up towards the end. This makes the animation go faster in the beginning and then slows it down towards the end. Now let's edit the curves. Click on the node at the beginning of the graph. You'll get a handle to work with. Now, let's push the handle down. Let's edit the ending node as well. Let's push it up. Now, the animation should go super slow at the beginning. Then, as the animation approaches the midpoint, it should speed up rapidly. And as it approaches the end, it should again slow down. Let's see if this is what happens. To preview the result, press the Enter key. You can also drag the seeker to see the flow. This is another dynamic way. If you push the same Ease slider down, you can achieve the Ease In. This will do the exact opposite of Ease Out. That is, it will slow the animation down at the beginning and speed it up towards the end. You can try the various combinations of the Ease In and Ease Out options to achieve various dynamic camera zoom in effects. In this part of the tutorial, we tried the camera zoom in option. Next, we'll see how to execute a camera track out. So, let's close this file now. Let's turn to another camera effect called as the camera track out, commonly known as camera zoom out. For this, again, we can open the original vector BG file we had prepared for animation. Press Ctrl plus Shift plus S to save a copy of the file, so the original file stays undisturbed. Name the file as Camera Tracking Out. We'll go through the same process of deleting extra layers, creating a frame on the 100th frame on the scene timeline. We'll again enter the desert symbol and create keyframes for all the graphic symbols on the 100th frame. Now, in this case, we want to make the viewers feel that they are moving away from the scene. So, our first keyframe must be an extreme zoom in. That means, we must scale up all the objects together on the first frame itself. Let's select all the keyframes on the first keyframe. Drag the Timeline Seeker to the first frame. Now click on the stage. Press Ctrl plus A to select all the symbols on the first keyframe. Now, press Ctrl plus Alt plus S to bring up the Scale and Rotate dialog box. Enter the value 200%. Repeat the scaling till the sun fills up the entire staging area. The camera tracking out should ensure that on the last frame, we can see our BG completely. Next, we need the symbols to gradually scale down to our chosen size at the end of the animation. So, Drag over and select one frame row from the timeline between the first and the hundredth frame. Note that the entire row on all layers is selected now. Go to the property tab and in the tween box select the motion option. In the ease option, drag the slider up to 100. This means we'll be easing out. Let's again recap what ease out does. The Ease Out option speeds up the animation at the beginning and slows it down towards the end. Let's preview the animation. Drag the Seeker to the first frame and press the Enter key. 
you will see that the camera is now zooming out or tracking out. As before, the effect is okay, but it's flat. How do we enhance it? We'll again use the camera principle we learned before. The objects closer to the camera move more and move faster than those away from it. For this, let's begin selecting the objects one by one and scaling them up. The frame is filled up with the sun. So, press Ctrl minus to let zoom out and view the entire work area. Now we can work. Remember, in the camera track in effect, we worked on the ending frame. In the camera track out or zoom out effect, we'll work on the first frame. As before, the objects closer to the viewer or camera will grow faster and those away will grow slower. So, press Ctrl plus Alt plus S to bring up the scale and rotate dialog box. If we scale up the outer cactus by say 140, then slowly the scale values of the inner objects, the other cactuses, the ground, the structures in the distance should have lesser and lesser scale values. Like 125, 120, 115, 110. This will give us the camera depth we want. While doing this, there are two things to remember. First, objects related to each other, for example in our case, this cactus and the ground it stands on should have equal scale values. Secondly, always make sure the scaling matches with the dimensions of other objects. If they don't match, then the viewer would see a jerk. So, be careful when you use different scales for different objects. This will, of course, come through practice. Okay, we have scaled them all up. Now, let's check the result. Double click outside the work area to come on the main stage. Lock the layers first. Go to frame 1 and press the enter key. Seems better. Let's do some more editing inside. Release the lock option for the vector layer and double click on it to enter the desert symbol. Let's scale up the outer cactus objects more. To give an even better feeling of the scene retreating backwards, let's move the objects outside. This means that as the animation progresses, we'll see the trees moving rapidly inside the scene. Let's again come to the main stage by double clicking outside. You can drag the timeline bar to check the changes for yourself. If you want any further editing, you can do it using the same processes we applied before. We recommend that you work with changes in color too. That should be interesting. Keep reviewing and comparing the effects till you get a hang of it. We just finished learning the basics of camera tracking out effect or zoom out effect. Let's close the file and go to the next type of camera movement in our tutorial called the camera pan. Let's again open the original vector BG file we had prepared for animation. Press Ctrl plus Shift plus S to save a copy of this file and name it camera panning. In camera pan, you'll see that in this session, we'll also be working on the original design also. Here's what we wish to achieve. You can see that camera panning is about BG movement. A camera pan familiarizes the viewer with our animation location and adds a feel of reality to the scene. Moving to our first step. First, delete the sketch layer. Unlock the vector layer so we can edit the contents. Double click on the objects on the screen to enter the desert symbol. You'll find that you are on the first frame by default. Now, press Ctrl plus A to select all the objects on all the layers. Press Ctrl plus C to copy them and then press Ctrl plus Shift plus V to paste all the objects in place. Now, go to the Modify menu, select the Transform tab and select the Flip Horizontal option. 
you'll see that your background has flipped sides. Now without clicking anywhere on the screen, use your keyboard right and left keys to move the selected objects a bit away from each other. Remember that we are doing this on the first frame itself. What we are trying to do is extend our background by using the same objects we have already created. Adjust it a bit. Alright, now repeat the same step again. Select all, press Ctrl plus A, copy, Ctrl plus C and paste in place, Ctrl plus Shift plus V. Now again, go to the modify menu, select the transform tab and select flip horizontal. Move the entire selection to the left and adjust them with each other. Since we are using the same objects we have created, making changes in any one copy of the object will reflect in all its copies simultaneously. Let's check how this happens. We'll enter this cactus symbol to see how this happens. Double click on the cactus twice to enter the broken object mode. Note the textured selection. Now, click outside and click only on the outline at the right. Delete the outline by pressing delete on keyboard. Observe that the outline in the flipped cactus has also disappeared. Let's go to the main stage by double clicking outside the work area. Look at the empty portion here. We need to fill it up. So, let's go inside the front ground. Use the selection tool to drag the corner rightwards. Note that the front ground near has extended as well. Remember that the changes in one object are reflected in all its copies in the entire document. This facility saves valuable time and doesn't increase the file size too much. Now, let's go inside the cactus again and pull the inner corner down. See again that the effect is repeated in its copy too. Double click outside to come out of the symbol. Now, press Ctrl minus to zoom out of the screen and check the same pointed effect in all the four different copies of the cactus. Look at the timeline now. Observe that there are a lot of empty layers. You can differentiate the empty layers and fill layers easily. The ones with dark circles are filled layers. Those with empty circles are blank layers. Carefully select all the blank layers one by one and delete them by pressing the trash button under the layer stack. Be careful not to touch layers with objects. It's a good habit to double check the entire layer stack to see if you can find any more blank layers. Okay, done. Time to come back to the main stage. Drag the timeline scroll bar and select the 125th frame on both the layers. Press F5 to add a frame. Let's begin the actual camera panning now. We want the viewer to see the background from the left to right. So, we push the object on sketch layer the extreme right on the first frame. Make sure you match the left border with the mask rectangle. Now think. We copied the original desert along with the sun. So, we find we have three suns. That would look strange and unrealistic, right? So, let's delete. Select the extra suns and delete them one by one. Next, the deleted suns are all on different layers. So, we'll have to find the blank sun layers and delete them too. Alright, we are all set. Now, come back to the main screen again. Go to the 125th frame and press F6 to add a keyframe to the sketch layer. Now, we want the viewer to see from left to right. So, we need to move the object from right to left. With the keyboard left arrow, push the entire extended desert to the extreme right on the 125th keyframe. Make sure the desert's right border matches with the mask rectangle. How do you ensure that the viewer doesn't see the incomplete objects at the right or left of your extended background? Simple, you keep those parts out of the mask's borders. Now, 
click on an in-between frame on the sketch layer timeline. Right click and select create motion twin. Here let's experiment a bit again on the ease option. Click the edit button to enter the graph. What we want is that the pan should start slow, then increase the speed just a bit and then again slow down towards the end. Clicking on the two nodes will use the handles. Slow in the beginning and slow at the end. We haven't made drastic speed changes here. The variations are very mild. Preview your camera panning by pressing the enter key. Good. To experiment a bit, you can enter the individual objects and change their design, their positions, their colors and their sizes to achieve more variations in the look of your background. This should be fun. Alright, now let's do some more in our tutorial. Select 175th frame on both the mask and sketch layers. Press F5 to add frames. On the last frame of the sketch layer, press F6 to add a keyframe. What we want to do here is, combine the camera pan with camera tracking effect. As usual, click on the last keyframe of the sketch layer and press Ctrl plus Alt plus S to bring up the scale and rotate dialog box. Enter the value 150. Now, change the position of our background just a bit. Right click on the frame before the keyframe and select create motion twin. Drag the timeline seeker right and left to view the effect. Note how the camera pans and then zooms into the scene. That ends our tutorial on the basics of camera movements. It is very important to concentrate on understanding the principles that we have applied for getting and enhancing the camera movement effect. Try to add to the desert background we have created. Create different types of bushes, trees or even animals. You can recolor the sun to create a moon. Darken the sky and add some stars and create a night scene. Experiment a lot with the object movements with relation to the camera. We recommend you create your own backgrounds and work on them to create your own camera movements. The point is Explore and combine the techniques with each other to understand the innumerable possibilities of camera movements in Flash. We are sure you enjoyed this tutorial on Camera Pan, Camera Tracking and Camera Trackout by Aroha Media. Thank you for watching and all the best.